Our message today is principles that applies in biblical stewardship. Principles that applies in biblical stewardship. I read a story about a woman who had finished her shopping and then she went to the uh, car park area and as he, she's about to enter her car, she saw four men inside of it. So what she did is she, she pulled a handgun from his purse and pointed it to the four men and said, I have a gun and I know how to use it. He said, go away from my car. So the four men got out of the car and they ran like crazy. They're so afraid because the old woman is carrying a gun and pointing that gun at them. So the woman, uh, he, she was shaken, immediately went inside and just tried to get away from the place. But for the life of her, she could not put the key into the ignition. And then all of a sudden she realized it was not her car. So when she looked outside, she saw that her car is about five cars away from where she is at the moment. So looking around, looking if the, the four men are still there, she immediately went to her car, put the uh, bags there, and she drove straight to the police to turn herself in because of what happened. And then while she's uh, telling the police about what happened, the police actually laughed and said, there are actually four men here reporting a carjacking that just happened a while ago. So because they told him the story, so they understood what really happened and no charges were filed against that woman. So she thought it was her car, but it really belonged to someone else. The truth is God owns everything. He owns that lady's car. He owns the car of those four men. He owns everything in this world. And he owns everything that we call as ours. God is the owner of everything. And we are merely stewards or managers of God's uh, owners, uh, things that he owns. Amen? And we are going to study today several things that applies to what we call biblical stewardship. Number one, let us look at the principle of ownership. The principle of ownership. In Psalms chapter 24, verses 1 and 2, as we have read a while ago, actually we're going to read them again to be refreshed. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The word and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. So we can see that in the beginning, according to Genesis, God created the heavens and the earth. If we will continue reading, we can see that God created everything and then put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden in order to work for it, to dress it, to replenish it, and all of these things. So it is very, very clear that man was created to work, and that work is what we call stewardship. We need to work for all of the creation that God has given to us. And that is the fundamental principle of biblical stewardship, that God owns everything. And because God owns everything, we are simply managers or administrators or stewards acting on the behalf of God. So everything I have today comes from God. Amen. The clothes that I'm wearing belongs to God. The family that I have belongs to God. The microphone I'm using belongs to God. The church that I'm leading belongs to God. Everything that I may call my own or everything that you may call your own actually belongs to God. We own nothing. The Bible says we came into this world with nothing and it is sure that we are going to leave this world with nothing. Amen. Because God owns everything. That's why in Psalms 89 verse 11, we can see this. When David said, 
in Psalms 89, 11, that the heavens are thine, the earth also is thine, as for the word and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. So listen, if I believe that I am the owner of all the things that I have in this world, then I am going to be constantly going to be in conflict with God. Why? Because if I will act as an owner, then I will use it according to my own will. I will use all of these things according to what my desire is and according to how it's going to make me happy. But when I understand that the Lord is the owner of all of these things and I am only the manager, listen, all the conflicts will disappear because I will use this for the glory of God. Amen. And if he is the owner, he must be the one to be glorified in everything that he entrusted unto us. Therefore, stewardship expresses our obedience regarding the administration of everything God has placed under our control. Yes, we have a measure of control, but that control must be under the will of God. Amen. Not under our own will. So stewardship is the commitment of one's self and possessions to God's service, recognizing that we do not have the right of control over our property or over ourselves. So this is the fundamental uh, principle when it comes to stewardship. So we should not even think that we are the cause or the reason of what we have. Sometimes we might be tempted to think that, well, I, I worked for it. I sweated for it. I did everything for it. I created it. I am the one who amassed all of these things. Ladies and gentlemen, that is from the devil. That is not from God. Because the fundamental principle is that everything belongs to God, including me and including you. And if we are tempted to do this, then we must realize that God is the final owner of everything. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 17 to 18. This actually is a something that we need to realize. And thou say in thine heart. Sometimes this is a, not actually sometimes, most of the time, this is what we're thinking. It is mine. I work for it. I did everything in order to get it. Then, because I, it is mine, then I'm going to use it. And thou saying in thine heart, my power and the, my, and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. So that, that is how people usually look at it. It belongs to us. It is mine. And I can do whatever I want to do with it. That is why we are always against God. That is why we're not glorifying God in our lives. Because if we will be the master of ourselves and the things that we have, as I have said a while ago, we will only use it to what will make us happy. I am going for a vacation. I am going to buy this. I am going to do that. I am going to spend it here. And nobody can tell me what to do. Why? Because it is mine. But God answers in verse 18. The Bible says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he. It is not me. It is not you. It is not them. It is not your father. It is not your mother. It is not your grandfather. It is not your boss. It is not anybody else. For it is he that giveth the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Why? Because there is something that God wanted us to accomplish. That is why he made us a steward. That's why he entrusted to us many, many things, so that in this life, as we administer, we can glorify God and do His will in our lives. Amen. Amen. When He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, He gave us money that we can use in order to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. When He said that you need to take care of the needs of your family, then He gave the fathers an income so that they can be a good steward in providing for their family. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever it is that we have, maybe physical matter, material matters, mental matter, emotional matter, God has given all of this faculty to us so that we can use it, administer it, realizing it belongs to Him 
for the glory of His name. Amen. So that is stewardship. So we need to understand. It came from God. We need to understand. It is from God. And we need not act like we own it. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 7. This is what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 7. But we have this treasure. No, I'm sorry. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 7. 7. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? That's the question of God. What is it that you, ha that you have that you did not receive? Meaning to say, it did not come from you. It did not originate from you. You're not the one who caused it to come to be. It says, and what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Meaning to say, we own nothing, but we were given all of these things. Now, the Bible says, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory? As if thou hadst received it, rece uh, not received it. You see, that's the problem. A steward can never boast. Because he has nothing. A steward can never uh, uh, trumpet these things into the world as if he is the one who achieved these things. Why? Because the truth of the matter is, he has nothing, he has no ability to get all of these things except it was given to him by God. That's why humility is the only option for a steward to realize and to thank God, Lord, I am nothing, I am not worthy, but thank you that you entrusted these things to me. I will do my best. Help me, O oh God, that I may employ it for the glory of your name and for the furtherance of the uh, gospel that you have entrusted unto me. That is why a good steward cannot but make his life a mighty part of God's ministry because that is the reason why God saved him. That is the reason why God gave to him and that is the reason why God allowed us to still stay in this world. Amen? So don't act like you own it. Oh, look at my car. <laughs> Shiny. Only two persons in the Philippines have that car. I'm the one and I do not even know the other. Look at our building. Look at the elevator. Look at the escalator. Look at the calculator. Look at all of these things. Yes, just my! You will salivate because of the beauty of our building. That does not belong to you. It belongs to God. Look at my people. These are not your people. These are the people of God. Look at what I have that does not belong to you. It belongs to God. It was entrusted to you by God so that you can point people to the goodness of God in your life and in the lives of other people. We are just stewards and God is the owner of everything. We belong to Him. Everything belongs to God. And there is nothing that we can call our own in this world because of the principle of ownership. Everything belongs to God. We came with nothing. We will live with nothing. And the only thing that we can have is something that God has given to us. Amen. That's why glory must be given to Him and we must understand that we are only stewards of these things. Number two. The principle of responsibility. The principle of responsibility. Although God gives us all things to richly enjoy, that's what the Bible says, but nothing is ours. Nothing really belongs to us. God owns everything. But we are responsible for how we treat it and what we do with what God has entrusted to us. So there is what we call responsibility in receiving what God has given to us. Listen, while we complain about our rights here on earth, that's people. Oh, it's my right. I am entitled to this. I must have this. You must do this to me. I must do this to you. You have to treat me like this. We always wanted to, to assert for our rights, but listen, 
the Bible constantly asks, what about your responsibilities? Yes, you want rights, but question, do you own responsibilities for those rights? It is your right to be a member of this church, but are you a responsible member of this church? It is your right to have the privileges that this church can afford you, but question, are you responsible for the privileges that this church is affording you? So we always talk of our right. We always talk of the things that we should have in life. But listen, the owner is God and the owner have rights and stewards only have responsibilities. We do not have the right because it does not belong to us. It belongs to God. God has the right. That's why he said, your body belongs to God and he can do whatever he wants to do with our body. That should be the case. Amen? That should be the way. We do not have the right to do whatever we want to do with our body because this body belongs to God. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. That ye are purchased with a great price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Amen? It belongs to Him. So that's why we are responsible to everything that we do. That's why the Bible says we will give an account of everything that we have done in this body, everything that we have said, whether it's good or bad. No matter what it is, we are responsible to God. So we are called God's steward to manage that which belongs to God. We are merely managers. While God has graciously entrusted us with care, development, and enjoyment of everything he owns. You see, that's already the, uh, the blessing of being a steward. It does not belong to us, but we can enjoy it. You understand what I'm saying? Like for example, you were entrusted with a house. The house does not belong to you, but you can live there. You can use the kitchen. You can use the bedroom. You can use the dining room. You can use the bathroom. You can use the whatever room, the buru room if they have. You can use all of that. That is the privilege of being a steward. So, it does not belong to us, but we can enjoy it, but we need to be responsible to the owner. So that's why he's letting us use all of these things so that at the same time, we can enjoy everything that he owns as his stewards. But we are responsible to manage his holdings well and according to his desires and purpose. Why did he give us the money? Let us ask God why. Why did he give us family? Let us ask God why. Why is it that he entrusted to us children or a son or a daughter or many children for that matter? Why? So we need to ask God don't act anything as if you are the owner. But let us act recognizing the ownership of God and we are responsible to the owner for entrusting these things to us. Listen, a manager oversees the owner's assets for the owner's benefit. Not for our benefit. Amen. But most of the time we act for our own benefit. What will benefit me? What will I can get if I will do this, if I will do that. That is our problem. We are acting as owner of things, as owner of our life, as owner of our destiny, instead of just merely manager of something, and we must do it in order to glorify and benefit the owner and not us. Why? Because if the owners will be benefited, he will continue to entrust us with more than what he has entrusted to us today. Amen? So if God is the owner and I am the manager whom he trusted with his property, then I must learn to think, therefore, like his manager. Think as a manager, not as an owner. So that what, in whatever we do in life, it will always be for the benefit of the owner. And because of that, we are not going to have this what we call sense of entitlement to the assets that we manage in life. We will not say, that, oh, no, that's my right. 
No, you need to do this to me. No, you need to give this to me. No, uh, as a pastor of this church, it is my right to this, to this, to this, to this. No, I am just a steward. I have no entitlement. I have no right whatsoever except to do my being a manager according to the will of the owner who entrusted things to me, my family to me, this church to me. I need to even use the authority in a way that he wanted me to use because that authority came from him, not from me. I do not have an intrinsic authority, but all authority in essence, in essence came from God. So that is why even how to manage this church, it must be according to his will. Not according to how I want to run this church. So I cannot have this sense of entitlement because the job of a manager is to find out what the owner wants done with his assets. That is our job. And to carry out his will, this understanding actually will affect how we give to God. Number one, it will make us to give abundantly. If we realize that we're just owners, uh, that we're just managers and not owners, it will cause us to give abundantly to whatever God's will is. Look at first uh, uh, Chronicles chapter 29, verse number 14. You know, King David, the most powerful man on earth during his time, understood this owner-manager relationship. So after receiving a tremendous offering, David responded to God here. And he said, but who am I? You see the humility? Amen? Amen? You see the acknowledgement that everything belongs to God? He says, but who am I? And what is my people? Who are we? In front of you, O God. That we should be able to offer so willingly after the sort. Who are we that we can give you this much? He said, for all things come of thee. And of thine own have we given thee. He said the truth of the matter, Lord, is even though if we were able to give this humongous, tremendous amount, the truth is, it even belongs to you. The truth is, what we are giving you is yours in the first place. So how can you not give abundantly if it is the will of God? You understand what I'm saying? How can you not give abundantly if it is according to his cause. They're going to build the temple. They're going to do something for God. And because they realize that they are stewards of God, then they said, we are going to give abundantly because what we're actually giving belongs to the one who is, whom we are giving it to. Parang ganito lang kasimple yan eh. Ba't mo pagdadamutan yung may-ari, eh kanya yun? Hmm. Bakit mo ipagkakait sa may-ari? Eh, kanya yun. Paano kung kunin niya? Oh. Pwede niyang kunin eh. Pinakakait mo buhay mo? Eh, kanya yun. Kukunin niya. Hmm. Pinakakait mo yung time mo. Kanina yun. Kanya yun eh. Eh, kung kunin niya. Oh. Pinakakait mo yung iyong talent. Eh, kanya yan. Kung kunin niya. Eh, di wala ka ng talent You are hoarding and not giving to him your, your uh, intelligence that belongs to him. What if he will take away that intelligence from you? What will happen to you? What will be left to you if God will take away everything? That is why if you understand that he is the owner, you're the manager, you can give abundantly to the cause of God. Amen? Anyway, listen, God is not going to be unrighteous to ask something from us what God will ask from us, He will see to it that He will first give it to us. Because it belongs to Him. He does not need it anyway. But we need faithfulness in our stewardship. That's why He is asking this from us so that we will understand how to be a good steward. Not only that we will give abundantly, 
But we will give sacrificially understanding that it is our privilege to sacrifice for God. Amen? Listen, it is a privilege to sacrifice for God. Why? Because God has sacrificed for us and if we can do something in that magnitude for God, then it is only a privilege given to us. Therefore, even our sacrifice is a privilege. Why? Because everything belongs to Him, not to us. We need to understand these things, ladies and gentlemen. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul tells of Macedonian Christians or churches of their sacrificial giving. Paul testifies here of the Macedonian believers. Look at 2 Corinthians 8, 1 to 5. We have read this many, many times that we will look at it one more time so that we can see the magnitude of the privilege that they are looking at even though they are actually sacrificing for what they are giving. Moreover, brethren, we do you to it of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. You see, it is a grace from God. How that in a great trial of affliction, there is much tribulation, there is much persecution that they're experiencing. The abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. You see, they use all of the negative, negative things in order to be positive in what they are doing for God. You see, most of us will use this as an excuse not to give. Amen? I, have no, not, I do not have much money, so I cannot give. I am suffering, so I cannot give. I am in much affliction, so I cannot give. Therefore, God will understand that I cannot give. Because I do not have much. But these Macedonian Christians are different. They let these negative things fuel them to give more to God. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. You see, Christians must be liberal in giving only. But not in other things. Amen? Amen. We should be conservative in many, many things. But when it comes to giving, we ought to be giving abundantly, generously, liberally. Look at verse number three. For to their power are I bear record. I know what they are capable of. I know what they can give. And beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. So even though they do not have the power to do it, they are willing to do it. If given the possibility and the chance. Verse number four. Praying us with much entreaty, nakikiusap pa sa amin that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. What they're looking at is that they have a chance to prove that they are a good steward of God. That because there is a need and there is a legitimate need, they are going to give what they ought to give or even more than what they ought to give so they can have the fellowship. Amen? The fellowship of serving, ministering to the saints. What did God say? That we need to do good, especially to the household of faith. Amen? Verse number five. And this they did, not as we hoped Actually, even if they will not give, Paul will understand. There will be no issue. There will be no problem because Paul knew their condition. But because they have given themselves to God, they can give everything by the grace of God. Amen? So that is understanding that they are just managers and not the owners. If you understand that you are a manager, you can give sacrificially as a privilege because you are doing it for the owner, thinking that. Very simple, mga kapatid. If I can please the owner, listen, if I can please the owner, what do you think will the owner will do for me? Or what the owner will do to me? We need to understand that. Do you remember Abraham? When he went up to Mount Moriah, to sacrifice his son at the altar. What did he say? He said, even if I sacrifice my son, God will make him alive again because God promised me that I'm going to be the father of many 
nations. But right then and there, God provided a substitute that He can sacrifice on that altar. Why? Because God was pleased with Abraham's. Abraham. What do you think will happen if God will be pleased in our stewardship? Will He not entrust to us more than what He is entrusting now? Oh, Pastor, I'm excited. I'm going to, to give sacrificially so that I will become rich. Wrong. So that I can do more and more and more and more as what he says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, the whole thing is not to get rich, but to become rich in good works that we can do more for God. So we need to understand this relationship so that we can give sacrificially and not only that, so that we can give joyfully or cheerfully. Ito yung cheerful giving if you understand that you are the manager and not the owner. You see, have you ever wondered why the Bible said that God loved a cheerful giver? Do you know why? Because cheerful giving is a sign that the giver understands that he is just the manager and not the owner of what he may have in this life. Cheerful giving can only come from a heart set on things above, not on things on earth. God loves a cheerful giver because such givers are investing in heaven which reaps eternal dividends. So what we are doing is for the sake of God, for the sake of His ministry, so that by the grace of God, for our sake, when we finally reach heaven, we can receive the dividends that God will give to those who invested their lives and those that God has entrusted to them in the ministry of the Lord. That is why we can say this, that we can really give cheerfully. You see, when the tabernacle was being built in the Old Testament, People got so caught up in the joy of their heavenly investment or giving that they have to be restrained from giving more. Look at Exodus 36, 4 to 7. Mangyari kaya sa atin to? Exodus 36, 4 to 7. Look at this. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work, which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. What happened? They got so excited and so joyful and cheerful in giving that they have given much more than what is needed. And Moses must step in and said, Enough! Tama na! Hindi na namin kailangan ng ibibigay nyo. Sobra na! Why? Because they understand that they are managers. And what happened? Did they lack anything? No. They have more. That's why they can give more. Because God has saw it fit to bless them and to entrust more to them because they are not going to shortchange God whenever a need is coming into four. That is the essence of being a good steward, responsibility. We need to be responsible to the things that God is giving us. You said, I have no more time. Where are you using your time? Pastor, I cannot attend because I, I have to make all of these grades. I have to do this computation. I have to put this on the, uh, cl uh, the class cards and all of these things. So I have no more time. So uh, the time that I should give for God, I have to sacrifice it. My, your sacrifice is a uh, different kind of sacrifice. It is the other way around. So how can God entrust you with more time? Pastor, can God give me more than 24 hours a day? No, but He can allow you to manage your time so that you can maximize it even though you have the same time every day. Amen? God will give you the wisdom on how to use that time. On how to redeem that time. 
on how you can manage everything according to the right use of time so, so that you can give more time to God and more time to those things that will last forever. You see, sometimes we do not know how to use our time. We're not a good managers of time. Minsan sa kilay nyo lang, ubus na time. It's not a king blade. Paano ko lalapas ng walang kilay? Kasi nga, bakit ka nagkaganyan in the first place? Kung ikaw ba'y nakontento, kung nakontento ka ba, ano pinagkakawa? Bunot ng kilay, bunot ng kilay, bandang huli, nukala ka na ng kilay. Araw-araw, didiskartehan mo. Nagamit ka pa ng ano yung tawag doon? Yung sa, yun, ano ng mga, ano tawag doon? Skwala. Pantay na kaya. Minsan, meron pa yung, ano na yata, yung kagano, yung stamp na lang. Sabi ko nga, para makatipid ka sa oras, patato ka na lang. Bawal naman ng tato. Ay, naku. Kasi nga, kayo, makontento na kayo nang hindi kayo nahuubusan sa pag may make-up. Naku, terrible. Ubus ang oras. Baka pag kwinenta nyo, mahaba pa yung sa sarili nyo, sa mukha nyo, kaysa sa paglilingkod nyo sa Panginoong Diyos naman. Tapos gusto nyo bigyan kayo ng maraing time ng Panginoon. How do you, how do, how do you use your talent? Saan? Saan nyo ginagamit? Sa school, maganda yun. Pero pinakakait nyo ba sa church yung talent nyo? Sa ibang bagay, sa ibang lugar, ang galing mo. Pagdating sa church, wala. Zero. Eh kasi, Pastor, sa iba na-appreciate ako dito sa church in this. Nakaking grow naman. Grow up, amen? Hindi mo kailangan ma-appreciate. Listen to this. God will honor what you're doing for Him. We may not recognize, we may not realize, we may not see, we may not appreciate, but God has a book of remembrance and God will see to it that when you're standing at the just message of Christ, God will give you reward for what you have done for Him and for His glory. Huwag kami, hindi kami ang magre-reward sa'yo. At pag lagi ka namin pinuri, wala ka ng reward. Kaya nga maganda pag may nagawa ka, huwag nang pansinin nang sa ganun yung reward buong-buo na ibibigay sa inang Panginoon. Pero mo hindi man lang ako na-recognize. Sino ba naglinis doon? Ako. Sino ba nagayos doon? Ako. Sino ba nagpaganda noon? Ako. Sino ba ang sirawo na rito? Ako. Hindi man lang ako na-recognize. Kapatid, we are not in the recognizing business. We are in the serving business. There is a time of recognition. Don't worry, pitong taon yun. At i-recognize ka ron hanggang gusto mo. Gagawa pa ako ng placard para sa'yo. Para ma-recognize lahat ng ginawa mo. But we ought to be responsible because as a steward, there is this principle of responsibility. Amen? Number three, the principle of accountability. The principle of accountability. A steward is one who manages the possession of another. We are all stewards of the resources, abilities, opportunities that God has entrusted to our care. And one day, each of us will be called to give an account for how we have managed what the Master has given us. So listen, this is the maxim. This is the most important thing taught by the parable of the talents. God has entrusted authority over the creation to us and we are not allowed to rule over it as we see it fit. Okay? The creation was entrusted to us by God. But we do not have the right to manage it according to how we want to manage it. But it must be managed according to the will of God. Amen. So we are called to exercise our dominion under the watchful eye of the Creator managing His creation in accord with the principles He has established from His 
word. That is why no Christian can be a good steward if that Christian does not know the word of God. Ito yung manual eh. Amen? Ito eh. Paano may mamanage? Hindi mo binasa manual. Bago ka magtrabaho, they're going to give you a manual and you need to study that manual so that you will know how to work with them so that you will know your responsibilities, so that you will know your accountability, so that you will know what to do in order to be a good employee of that company. And if you do not know the manual of that company, you will be in many, many troubles right and left, up and down, in and out. Because you will be at a loss by not knowing the manual of instruction. And that is the same thing. We are steward, and this is our manual of instruction. This is where we can know how to manage the things that the Lord has entrusted unto us. Like the servants in the parable of the talents, we will be called to give an account of how we have administered everything. We have been given, including our time, our money, our abilities, our information, our wisdom, our relationships, and our authority. Yan ang stewardship natin. We will give an account in all areas. So if we are going to give an account to the rightful owner as to how well we manage the thing he has entrusted to us. Look at Romans 14, 10 to 12. Ito na yung great accounting day. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Ingat po kayo dyan. O hindi pala pwedeng i-judge ang brother. Hindi pala pwedeng i-judge ang servant ng iba. Context po ninyo. Judgment seat na po ito. Hindi na po earth ang context dito. Dito sa earth, we can judge righteously. We can judge according to the word of God. We can judge in the areas that God wanted us to judge. And then, tuloy. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Kailan yan? At the judgment seat of Christ, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Tuloy? Ganun lang ba? Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather. See? Do not judge, judge this that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Yun ang ingatan natin. Yung ma-stumble sila. That, they, that we are going to be a stumbling block. So pastor, if I stumble because of you, so you're a stumbling block. That does not necessarily follow. You need to understand if a, as a Christian, you should know the word of God so that you will never stumble. Why? Because you are the light. Amen? You are carrying the light. Use the light so that you will see the way. And as you see the way, you will not stumble. And if you stumble because I am doing right, then you are wrong. It is if I did something wrong and you stumble that I am accountable to your stumbling. You understand? Kasi ito, ang point agad, ay natisod ako eh. Bakit? Kasi ginawa niya yung tama eh. Aba, kasalanan niya. Natis, natis, natisod ka kasi ginawa niya tama. Gamit naman ang isip kapatid. Amen? Pag mali ginawa niya, natisod ka, Mananagot siya. Pero, mananagot ka rin. Bakit ka natisod? Oh, ba't natisod ka? Parang, naku, nakakatisod to. Ayan, matitisod ako. Matitisod ako. Ayan, natisod ako. Aba, edi iwasan mo. Aba, edi yakbangan mo. O mas maigi pa, kung katitisuran, tungtungan mo para lalo kang umangat at lalo ka lumago sa harapan ng Panginoon. Ang mga Kristiyano, hindi tiso rin. Kung Kristisod ka, abay, maging Kristudtud ka na lang. Ano yung tudtud? Matulog sa kapampangan. Kasi, pag Kristisod ka, mananatili kang Kristiyana. Hindi ka lalaki. Ang lalaki lang sa'yo, Dahil kain ka ng kain, Christian. Yun. Minsan, lakas ng loob natin eh. Natisod ako. 
hindi ko pinagmamalaki ang pagkakatisod. Tuwan-tuwa po ako, pinagmamalaki ako kasi natisod ako. Wow! Ang lalim mo, kapatid. Amen? We will give an account to God and we are going to be judged. Each will give a personal account to God. Ano yun? Number one, account of ourselves. The owner will check how devoted we have been to Him. How devoted are you with God? You see, sometimes we can be more devoted to people than to God. Amen? Minsan, mas, mas ipagtatanggol mo pa yung tao kesa sa Diyos. Minsan, mas titindigan mo pa yung tao kesa sa gusto ng Diyos. How devoted are we to God? Our devotion to God must be complete. It must be 100%. The Bible says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. That's what the Bible says. With all, not with some, not with most. But sometimes, as I have said, we are more devoted to people than to God. We will do to people what we will not do for God. Kailangan ko ng kotse, gagawa kayo ng paraan. Kailangan ng, pang- ng gawain ng Diyos ang sasakyan, walang gagawa ng paraan. Hmm. Kailangan ko ng bahay, gagawa ng paraan ng mga membro. Kailangan ng Diyos ng church building, walang gagawa ng paraan. Bakit kasi hindi naman sila ma-acknowledge ng Diyos eh. Pero yung pastor, ma-acknowledge sila. Example pa sila. And si Brother Wilson, he gave two million dollars at, at pesos last year. Brother Alex, he gave 3.8 million pesos. Sister Jubel, she gave 5 million pesos. Sister Nyao Nyao, she gave 6 million pesos. Brother Cedric, 7 million. But Cedric is only number two. Who is number one? Me. I gave 10 million. Ganun. Ang nangyayari. Kaya sumisip-sip ka para tuwing preaching, bida ka. May example ka. Pero sa Diyos, hindi mo gagawin. Kasi hindi naman magawa ng Diyos yun eh. Ang nagawa nun ng pastor, hindi ang Diyos. Kaya nga nung lagi ko sinasabi in this church, do not do for me what you are not willing to do more for God because when you do that, that is idolatry. Idolatry yun. Biro mo ginawa mo sa akin, hindi mo nagawa sa Diyos. Biro mo ginawa mo sa akin, hindi mo ginawa ng higit sa Panginoong Diyos. Kaya kung may ibibigay ka sa akin, dapat nakahanda kang magbigay ng higit sa Diyos kesa sa akin. Ganun yun. At ganun din ako sa inyo. Kung anong gagawin ko sa inyo, dapat higit na mas gagawin ko sa Diyos kaysa sa inyo. Amen? Why? Because I am going to give an account of myself how devoted I am to God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Liwanag niyan, di ba? Romans 12 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Ibibigay natin ng account. How we use our bodies in serving the Lord. Paul says a proper and spiritual act of worship is to give yourself fully to your owner to be used as his servant. Number two, our possessions. He will also hold me accountable for what I've done with the things he has entrusted to me. That's why in the parable, Jesus gave concern a master who entrusted his possession to three servants while he was away. When he came, he asked the servant to give an account to be responsible for what were given to them and those who did, their responsibility were given more than the one who hid and shun to do his responsibility. So what are we doing with the possessions that we have? So we already spend much time with this. Our time. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. We need to count our, make our days count. That's why David says, Lord, teach us to number our days. So let us use this time for the glory of God. And then of course, our abilities, as I have mentioned a while ago, 
the talents that God has given you, how are you employing it? Are you employing it in the ministry of God? Or are you employing it for self-satisfaction or even for the applause of men? That's why we need to be careful because we are accountable in everything that will come our way. Amen? And lastly, ayan. Pastor, ba't ang haba na naman ang preaching? Ang ganda nga nun, ibiro mo yung time mo na gamit mo sa Diyos. Ang gandang stewardship. Kaya lang nainip ka na wala ng kabuluhan. At pinag-pray mo matapos agad na wala ng kabuluhan. At sabi mo, Panginoon, wag mo matapos agad. Okay lang ho. Mawala na lang ng boses si pastor. Abay, ganun din yun eh. Pag nawala na ko ng boses, tapos sa usap. Hindi ko naman ma-assign. Number one, the principle of? Number two, the principle of? Number three, the principle of? Ito maganda. Number four, the principle of reward. If we are going to be a good steward, whether we like it or not, as a bonus, God will give us a reward. Amen? So the Bible shows in the parable of the kingdom that faithful stewards who do the master's will with the master's resources can expect to be rewarded incompletely in this life but fully in the next. The reward that we can have here are only an earnest of the reward that God will fully give us when we finally are standing face to face with Him. We are going to hear the much-awaited phrase that every Christian long to hear. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Amen? You see, we need to embrace a larger biblical view of stewardship, which goes beyond church budget, building, lot, project, mission, but it encompasses all of our lives. That is why I have reiterated before and I am going to reiterate again that our stewardship is broad. Yes, the church is involved very much so, but our stewardship is not only about the church. It is about our family. It is about our work. It is about our friends. It is about the poor in this world. It is about the lost that are in need of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is about our health. It is about taking care of the temple that God has given to us. This encompasses all of our stewardship. Therefore, therefore, God will never ask us to give everything in one area to the neglect of other areas. You understand what I'm saying? Are you following me? God will never ask us to give everything in one area of stewardship and neglect the other areas of stewardship. That is why God will never ask you to give everything for a church project. He will never ask you to give everything for a church ministry. He will ask you just enough so that these things will be done according to His will and then we can still be a good steward of other areas of our life. So don't be fooled into believing that God is asking for everything. If there is something that God is asking for everything, that is our life to be given to Him as a living sacrifice which is wholly acceptable unto our God. So if we know these things, then we will understand that we have to be a good steward in all of this because your family must trust you. Your boss must trust you by doing your job. Your friends must trust you. The poor must be able to depend upon you because you're a steward of God. And this encompass, this includes all of our stewardship. And if you want to give sacrificially, be sure to give what you can use for your own self to the cause of Christ so that if there is one who will sacrifice, it is you, not other people that you made to suffer because of what you want to accomplish in your being steward. You understand? Gusto mo magsakripisyo yung para sa'yo. Huwag mong isakripisyo yung para sa iba. 
Kasi stewardship mo yun eh. Okay. Naku, nangangailangan sa church. Mga anak, huwag mo na kayong magmatrikula ha. Ibibigay ko yung pangmatrikula yun sa church. Mali. Steward ka ng pamilya mo. Yung matrikula nila, huwag mong pakialaman yun. Doon naka-earmark yun. Doon tinalaga ng Diyos yun. Yung panggastos mo sa sarili, yun ang ibigay mo. Tiisin mong isang buwan na no? hindi mo makamtan yun kasi nagsakripisyo ka and that is your privilege to God. Huwag mong idamay yung iba because that is not a good steward. So if the examination will happen today, if God will come today and we will be called by the owner to give an account of everything that He has given to us. Question. And if we will look at how we give everything to Him, would it reflect a humble belief that you are only a manager and not an owner? Would you have joy and will cheer mark your life as one who gives generously because you know that you're investing for something that will never be taken away from you, treasures in heaven, what would it be? You see, the old lady was mistaken and she went to the wrong car. She wielded a gun and sent the passengers running away. But hers was an honest mistake. That is why she was not church. But ladies and gentlemen, we know that everything belongs to God. And if we will misuse it, we cannot be innocent because we know it belongs to God. And because it belongs to Him, we need to use it according to His will. Principles that applies to biblical stewardship. So we stand up, please.